that crime is shoplifting. Officials say eight out of 100 shoplifters are caught, and one out of eight shoppers are shoplifters. Last year, $5 million in shoplifting losses were paid by merchants and consumers in the city of Montgomery. Officials say shoplifters take an average of $18.50 each time they steal an item from a store. Local security man for Montgomery store, Bruce Nielsen, explains the cost to the consumer. The United States uh, last year lost over $500 million to shoplifters, and breaking that down to each consumer, we're paying over $175 a year each consumer for shoplifting. This is a hidden tax or this is through price raises that we're paying for people that shoplift. So it's costing us quite a bit. In Montgomery alone, we lost over four and a half million dollars last year to shoplifters and we expect a 33 percent increase when this year. When you say we, do you mean the combined merchants in combined, this Montgomery area? Yes, the combined merchants in the Montgomery area, all the retail outlets here in Montgomery area. We're losing quite a bit this year and it's uh, going to be worse next year. Nielsen says at least 5,000 people were prosecuted in Montgomery County last year for shoplifting. But the vigil goes on, and people like him all over Montgomery will continue to be hidden and concealed until they can spot somebody taking something without paying for it and costing you more money when you pay for what you buy. This is Norman Lumpkin, WSFA-TV News reporting. Our contract is open to anybody who would like to see it. There is no mention made of a clock. There was never any mention made of that. We have absolutely nothing to do with that. Believe me, when our people are in the mobile unit, there are a thousand and one things going on. We're trying to do a football game. We have no idea of what's going on out in that field. Does it cost your network more money to go past a certain time, say 10 o'clock at that particular time segment? Uh, yes, it does. Uh, but our particular concern last year when we were prime time was not the cost because we faced this uh, perhaps we've done 50 football games in the last 10 years. I would say that uh, uh, maybe 42 of them have uh, gone beyond the time. We ran over last week when we were doing the uh, Tangerine Bowl. So that isn't a concern. Uh, that's an insignificant amount when you're talking about the total dollars that we generate during a football game. What our concern is is that when we are in prime time, we butt into the 11 o'clock news of the local stations. Now, it isn't so bad when you have two teams because then they're forced to stay with it. But when you have an all-star game, and there's no identification between one team and another. When we go past 11 o'clock, I would say that maybe 30 to 50 percent of those stations are going to cut away from you. And that means that we're not on the air. So that was our primary concern. Uh, when we have our staff meeting, we talk about the time frame. This is what we stress. We would like to get over by 11 o'clock, not because it costs us money. It does. Uh, I'm not going to deny that. But it does that, as I say, in 45 uh, percent of the games that we do. But because we don't want the stations breaking away. The governor's mansion is one of two of the targets by civil rights groups in Alabama and one of a number in the southeast opposing the death penalty. Organizers of the Alabama vigil say they oppose the death penalty because it is barbaric punishment which compounds the violence in our society and solves no problems. There are some five here in front of the governor's mansion right now. Uh, they have presented a letter to Governor Wallace. We will talk with Randy Williams, one of the group's organizers, to explain what the letter said uh, to the governor. The crime with platitudes. Many people today believe that the state can finally apply capital punishment without discriminating against any particular classes or races, but that is not true. Capital punishment today is just as much the privilege of the poor as it has ever been. When we begin executing in Alabama again, those who march to the electric chair will be poor, uneducated, powerless, and friendless. Many will be black because it is a sad fact that we still keep many of our black brothers and sisters pushed into the pit of poverty. Throughout Alabama, families are gathered in their homes tonight to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, whose teachings of love for fellow man we uphold as gospel. We appeal to you, Governor Wallace, to display compassion when you are, in the coming months, confronted with capital punishment. Mr. Williams, how long do you plan to stay here in front of the governor's mansion? Uh, about 25 more minutes. Have you had any word from the governor at all in regard to this letter? No, we have not. We gave it a few moments ago uh, to officers here and asked it to be carried to him. We, we don't really expect any response tonight. Any particular reason why you chose tonight to pose this vigil? Well, tonight's the one night of the year uh, which stands more than any other, I guess, for the spirit of love for fellow man and uh, it's the night when people are gathered 
across the state uh, celebrating uh, the birthday of Jesus Christ, and we felt like this would be an appropriate time. Thank you very much, sir. Yes. Governor Wallace, an advocate of the uh, death penalty, is reported to be inside the mansion with his family. He is not expected to acknowledge the presence of the group, but we do not know if he has refused to meet with them. Reporting live from the governor's mansion, George Mitchell, WSFA TV News. It's pretty heavy and all, especially along this part. Why it bothers them to travel? It's it's pretty rough getting stuck in all this traffic all the time. They need need to do something to get it a little less congested. I think it's terrible, but it's our own fault. We're out here at the last minute shopping. <laughs> Six of the blue, Kramer throws, and complete! Kramer hits his man, and that's Kramer, that six out of 11. That's and it is third down. Third down at about four at the five-yard line. Kramer looking, throwing, touchdown! Oh. 83, Kenneth Roy of Rice. The gray margin. Good kick is through the uprights, and good. Two more chances for the blue to score on this series of downs with under four or five minutes to play in the game. Good touchdown, 30. 28, Keith Hartwig. Well, he went to the other side now. He was not picked up by Eric Harris. Instead, Oliver Davis was the man on the opposite side that drew the assignment. Hartwig figured if I can't beat Harris, let me try the other side. And the it blue, worked. The blue strikes. They put the Union Jack down in the end zone. Finally. D38! the game may come down to the, the ability to get the ball to Izzy and Thad on the wings? Well, I don't you know, want to say that's going to be the key to it, but I think we're going to have to throw the ball early you know, to open them up for the defense. I mean, for their defense won't, you know, I'll just get up there on the line, you know, wait for the run. You know, if we throw on ball, throw the ball early, I think that, you know, that's going to open up. Our running game is going to get to going. Yeah, I think it will because, you know, I think, you know, them considering us being a wishbone team, I think they're going to take away the run from us, and so we're going to have to put yeah, that problem. up that way, huh? Uh-huh. Well, it was a fine season. It's not a culmination of any dream yet because we still have a way to go and, you know, we have to work hard and we're not an established uh, football school by any manner or means. We know it. We're kind of an upstart and we just have to keep working hard and hope that we can keep improving our program. Well, you say it's not the culmination. What's to come? What are your, what are your future goals? Well, our future goals are we're, we're going to pick up, uh, hopefully over the next few years, a few different teams and uh, get ourselves a tougher schedule. A lot of people are saying we don't play anybody and we're going to be picking up a few teams and hope that we can compete and compete well with those teams. You said earlier that you thought you would be competitive with some uh, SEC teams. Uh, 
Alabama in particular, is that correct? Well, I was asked that question, and I have to, I have to give an answer. And I, I, would, I don't want to cite in on Alabama in particular. What, what I did say is that I haven't had the opportunity to see these teams play other than uh, Alabama and Memphis State on film. And again, we're looking at one game, so it, it, it's very difficult to make a judgment. Well, I feel we had a good football team, and I do feel we would be competitive with uh, either Alabama or Memphis State. involved in narcotics work for three years. I've been a supervisor in narcotics work for two of those three years. I've, I've come in contact with practically every major drug dealer in the city of Montgomery. I have had occasion to be a part of the arrest of several major drug dealers in this city. On many occasions while I was sitting across the desk from these drug violators, major pushers, they have smiled at me and said, you will never convict me because I've smoked dope with Jimmy Evans. These same people are the people who have been turned loose by the court of Montgomery County. For this reason, I believe that the district attorney has a personal interest in knowing who the drug informers for the city of Montgomery are. what time about 10 o'clock or thereabouts uh, I received a call from one of our agents officer Havard who stated to me that he had a reliable informant at the Paradise Motor Hotel uh, in all so I hit two on the road so, you know, and you like playing at Yankee Stadium, by the way. in other words, that, that's true. Yeah, I like yeah. playing at Yankee Stadium and like, you know, I've been hearing a lot of talk, you know, about being traded and stuff like that. But, you know, I don't really think I'm going to get traded. You want to know the truth about it? Yeah. Yankees want you to hit some more homers. Well, I think so. You know, I think that ballpark, you know, I think that ballpark, it was, you know, built for me, you know, because I'm a pool hitter and right field is short. And I think I can help the Yankees ball team if I stay with them. You, you platooned quite a bit with Lou Pinella this year. Did you mind that? Well, yes, you know, in a way, but, you know, like, when I got to spring train, Billy told me I was going to be platooning. So, and he kept his word, and I platooned, you know, all year. And, like, when somebody come out and tell you what you're going to be doing, if you, go, you know, if you be doing it, you don't mind doing it. So I was happy doing it, you know. And, like, when I started the game against uh, 
right-handers, if they brought in a left-hander, I would play the whole game out. Yeah. So, you know, when I was with Cleveland, when I was platooning, like if I start a game, if they bring a left-hander in, I would come out of the game. But now, like if I start a game, I get a chance to play the whole game. Good afternoon, George. The usual today? The usual, George. At George Applegate's hairstyling club, you get the usual. With the not-so-usual. Customers get more than just a shampoo and a cut. They get a show. They're entertained by a professional dancer who performs on a specially built stage facing the three private cutting booths. The small talk between stylist and customer doesn't take place at George Applegate's. It doesn't need to. There's something better to pass time with here. Before gentlemen come in and got his hair styled and basically looked at a magazine. And uh, this makes me feel very good to where uh, we can have some entertainment for the uh, customer. Any good uh, stylist uh, concentrates on his work, and therefore the uh, dancer doesn't uh, bother him at all. In fact, uh, I don't even uh, know she's there. I don't even uh, hear the sound. George Applegate's hairstyling club is for members only, and only a certain number of memberships will be sold. But Applegate expects his talents and her talents will keep his customers coming back. Andy Garmazy, reporting from Tucson, Arizona. As I mentioned earlier, I think that's, uh, that's very healthy. Uh, all along, I've called for uh, the young men to be tried and to be prosecuted to the limit of the ability of the prosecutors, uh, that uh, they could offer their best defense and let a jury of their peers say they're guilty or not guilty, and let a judge pronounce, uh, pronounce whatever he pronounces upon it. I think that uh, we then will be exercising uh, the American judicial system as it exists and for the purpose for which it exists, and that they will be guaranteed and will be given their constitutional right of a fair and speedy trial. I think that's the, the most positive, best step forward that can be made at this time. You see this as a solution to the controversy? No, I, 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 would, not, uh, I would not be so flippant, really, as to say that, that this would end any kind of controversy. I don't know whether it will or not. I just believe this is a positive step forward. That I've said from the very beginning, from the first time I talked to the council about the legal fees, uh, that let justice be served, and justice can best be served by, by handling it in a court of law, in front of a jury, and with a judge presiding. That is the proper way, that is the only way, that is the best way, and I'm delighted to know that it's coming to pass. Well, I'm gratified that the city's position uh, held forth uh, with the Supreme Court. Uh, I'm also happy now that it clears the way for us to go ahead and complete some of those projects that really were already under construction. It clears the air and sets us on a cliff course, and uh, now we'll be able to meet those needs that are so badly needed in some areas of our city. What are some of those projects? Well, uh, by paving of, uh, of certain streets, uh, the uh, working on the, uh, some of the park areas, and the implementation of some $3 million worth of work. Well, I would have immediately issued an administrative order to stop all spending, all change orders, all work that I possibly could, uh, pending uh, uh, a, uh, a further hearing. Uh, and I think we probably would have, would have, would have uh, appealed it even further. But I think that uh, that's all clear now, and that's just uh, supposed questions. Fact is now it's clean and clear, and we're ready to go. This law becomes effective the 1st of January of 77. Anyone 
receiving a license renewal, whether it's a new license or renewal or replacement. They will have to come to this location uh, at the Coliseum Boulevard, 1040A, uh, to receive the license. And at this time, a picture will be placed on their license, and as well as any changes that may occur over the uh, past few months, maybe hair change color, you know, and various other things that may uh, be of any, ch any change. Uh, of course, if they lose a license, it would be replaced at this place with a, a dollar and a half uh, charge. A person who wishes to donate any body organs or the entire body for scientific research or for transplants uh, to another individual, there is a place on the license where it can be donated that this is his wish. In addition to this, there is an affidavit that the person will, will fill out. This affidavit will be filled out and witnessed by two people here at the driver's license uh, uh, renewal station. And then this will be noted on the license and also the affidavit will be filed. This will be good as long as that license is current. If the license expires or uh, is not renewed, then of course the certificate uh, expires at the same time. But this will give a person this opportunity to do so and will aid uh, someone to see or someone to live. Well, we think it'll be very beneficial. As you know, for many years we've attempted to uh, get this legislation passed, and we think it'll be very helpful uh, not only to law enforcement officers but also to the merchants of this state. And uh, uh, there's been a lot of work uh, on uh, the Montgomery County Commission and the uh, Judge uh, Walker Hobby and uh, the uh, Governor's Traffic Safety and LEPA and uh, been a lot of work and I hope we'll be able to meet the deadline. Because I have a very limited staff, the staff is not large enough to take care of these that we've got, and uh, the additional inmate would cause an undue burden upon my department. Do you feel, um, do you feel strange having a, a judge in, in another city giving instructions on sending inmates over here? Frankly, I haven't received any official words from any judge other than our local judge here, and uh, I would feel a little funny, but uh, I'm already under one court order, and I haven't been served officially other than this one. Have you had any past experiences with similar situations like this? Yes, uh, we have uh, had inmates out of Hale County that it's caused us uh, some problems. We had one out of Lowndes County that caused us a lot of problems. We kept him there over a year, and uh, runs up, you know, quite a bit of money. Uh, if we get one of these inmates, if we have to put him into the hospital, then I have to put a guard on him 24 hours a day. And it happened with this one out of Hale County. He was in the hospital for several days. Then uh, the one out of Lowndes County was hospitalized on two or three different occasions. Of course, it wasn't overnight on him, but it was so often. And the jail is situated some five, six miles out, and by the time you pick up one of them and come to the doctor, this, that, and the other, you've shot two hours or so. And, and your sympathy is with Montgomery County officials. It's certainly just that so. I have no quarrel with uh, Sheriff Butler. And if I had an opportunity to get rid of 20, I certainly would, too. And I'd love to pick mine, just like I'm sure he would have picked his for me. And I uh, have nothing against Maxim Butler. I would have tried the same thing.
Essentially, Dallas County officials say they have nothing against the desires of Montgomery County officials. It's just that, despite the room here, they say there's not enough funding or personnel to fulfill Montgomery County's wishes. From the Dallas County Jail outside Selma, Bill Weaver, WSFA TV News. I had any doubts about my ability or uh, our team as a whole, but you know, I came into this season just like any other season. I prepared myself over the summer. I didn't really go out and change anything because I was one of the top Heisman Trophy candidates. I just, you know, I'm just a person that I take things as they come, and I went out and tried to do my best on the football field, and I think this is a credit to the season that I've had. A lot of people say there's a jinx connected with the Heisman Trophy. Did you ever think about that? Well, I've been, if, if, if I, I'm not, I'm, real, I'm not superstitious at all, and if I believe in jinx, uh, I was supposed to have been jinxed many times before in my career, so uh, I don't think about any jinxes, and I'm hoping it doesn't jinx me, but if, if it does, I just, I think it's just a coincidence, you know. One last question. You've been confident through your four years with the Panthers of Pittsburgh. Are you confident with a professional career lying ahead of you? Well, you know, I, a lot of people say I may be too small to be a professional running back or something like that, but right now, I really don't feel my size has anything to do it will not, I don't think it will hinder me in no way as being a professional a football player. It's just going to be a matter of me keeping myself healthy and just going out and working out and keeping myself in shape year-round. Ken Gunther grows Christmas trees in Black River Falls, Wisconsin. Last August, Ken was chosen as the National Christmas Tree Grower in a competition where growers from 18 states showed off their best trees. It gave Ken the right to supply the White House with a tree this year. Unfortunately, Ken didn't have the right size tree in his own supply. None were tall enough for the high ceiling blue room. Ken searched two and a half months for just the right tree. He finally found one 18 miles from his own plantation. It was planted by Bertha Rhodes, who's been growing trees since her husband died two decades ago. At first I started in a little pot. I used to sell little seedlings out here on the highway. And I, I tried them in little pots. It didn't do good, so I stuck it out here and just forgot about it. And Is it I, natural? It's or? natural. It never was sheared, never touched. Are you going to miss it? No, I have to put another one right back in place of it. I got a lot of nice balsams. Ken and Diane Gunther will leave for Washington by truck on Wednesday to deliver the tree to Mrs. Ford on Saturday. For NBC News, this is Tony Charles reporting from Maryland, Wisconsin. Serpico will not be presented this evening, but will return next week at its regularly scheduled time. Stern on federal government watering down equal opportunity programs, 145. Number 8, New York, Brian Ross on continuing terrorist activities by anti-Castro groups in Miami and elsewhere, 345. And 9, New York, John Palmer on Paris scientists trying to restore... Ramesses Mummy, 150. This ends the news program service for tonight. Thank you and good night. Within 12 months of his death, the socialist CIA obedient servant Joseph Armand. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Hold it. I want to talk to you. How come a big, able bodied fellow like you ain't in uniform? Don't you believe in serving your flag? I have a train to catch, Sergeant. You're an Irisher. Well, this is time for you to pay this country back for taking you in. Well, what do you say? Haven't you been? You're taking in? Yes. Ah, uh, please, Sergeant, let me go. I have to catch that train. And I have a quota to fill. Look, I'm not just talking about any outfit. I'm talking about Stacy's Brigade. We pay the highest bounties, $150. Cash on the barrelhead. What do you say? That's my train. Now you listen to me, Spud. now come when uh, no useful purpose is to be served 
by my maintaining that position, but rather the best interest of the country will be served by uh, my stating my unequivocal position that uh, I do support President Ford uh, for the nomination and will support him in the election with every resource that I have, with all the ability that I have. Number three, Atlanta, Don Oliver on Democratic Governors endorsing Carter, a minute 45. Number four, Tel Aviv, Tom Ackerman on the funeral service for Israeli officers slain in Uganda raid, a minute 30. Number five, Washington, Linda Ellerby on Congressional Junket, three minutes 15. Number six, Los Angeles, Barbara Hunter on Taiwanese athletes training for Olympics, a minute 30. And number seven, Washington, Carl Simpson on the first women cadets to enter Naval Academy at Annapolis, one minute. This ends the NBC News program service for tonight. Thank you and good night.